In this video, I want to continue to talk about some of the properties of taking the expectation of a random vector and then follow it up with the properties of what it actually means to take the variance of a random vector. So just sort of finishing up from last time, we were talking about what it actually means to take the expectation of a random variable x. And we said that that was actually defined as being equal to the expectation of each of those components. So let's now think about what it actually means to take the expectation of some sort of constant matrix A times our random vector x. Well, actually, sort of analogous to the scalar case, because of the fact that we have in the scalar case that the expectation of just some number A times a random variable x is defined as being equal to A times the expectation of x, it is actually very easy to prove that the expectation of a matrix A, a constant matrix A times a random vector x is just defined as being equal to A times the expectation of that random vector x. So there's actually no real change opposed to the scalar case, so that's, that's quite intuitive. Let's now think about what it actually means to take the variance of a random vector. So this is slightly different to that which we defined for the sort of scalar case. So just reminding ourselves of what it actually means to have a random vector, we have a random, a random vector x, which is defined as having components x1, x2, sort of through to xn, where each of these components is itself a random variable. So just when I sort of look at it like this, you might think that perhaps the way we would define the variance of x might be just to write it as the variance of x1, the second component being the variance of x2, all the way through to the variance of xn. So you might think that we just define the variance of a random vector to just be the variance of each of the individual components. But that wouldn't actually be correct because of the fact that even though each of these individual components has its own variance, this is sort of missing out on a bit of information, which is how these particular elements actually co-vary with one another. So we don't actually define the variance of a random vector as a vector. We define it actually as a matrix. So the way we actually define the variance of our random variable x is actually what we call the variance covariance matrix, which actually has components where the diagonal elements are just the variance of each of the random vectors, or each of the elements of a random vector rather. So we start off with a sort of variance of x1 in the top left, and then the next diagonal element is the variance of x2. And then we continue all the way to the bottom where we have the variance of xn. So you probably find yourself asking, what's the off diagonal elements? Well, they're just defined as the sort of covariance terms. So the sort of top um, one just to the right of the variance of x1 is the covariance of x1 with x2. And then we sort of continue on the right here all the way up to the covariance of x1 with xn. And then the sort of component underneath the variance of x1 is just the covariance of x2 with x1. And notice that this particular element and this element are actually exactly the same because it doesn't matter the order in which I take the covariance of two random variables, the order is completely um, unimportant. So if we sort of continue down this particular column, we sort of get to the bottom where we have the covariance of xn with x1, which again, notice, is exactly the same as this element up here because of the fact it doesn't matter the order in which I take the covariance of two random variables. So it actually turns out that our matrix is symmetric and you can sort of think about filling in these individual terms here, which we haven't filled in, um, but the rule is sort of exactly the same as that which I've shown for those sort of examples near the top left and sort of extending it all the way to the right and to the bottom. So this is what we actually mean by the variance covariance matrix of a random vector x. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how we actually define the variance of x and rather than writing it as a matrix, what's the sort of form which we use to actually find the variance of a random vector. Because remember, when we were sort of talking about scalar, we talked about the variance of x is being defined equal to the expectation of 
x minus its mean all squared. So that was what we defined as the variance of our random variable x. In the next video, we're going to talk about how we define the variance of a random vector x.